This is reindeer moss, Cladonia. There's also a Cladina version of it. You were talking about Usnea, mm -hmm. which grows mostly on tree limbs. Both can grow on rocks too. And it's a little lichen. Down here it'll be about that big. You go up about 5,000 feet up in the Smokies, you get it this long. You go out west and there's different versions, different families that are huge. It contains a chemical called Usnic acid, U-S-N-I-C. Usnic acid is a really powerful antibiotic and it has antiviral properties as well. It is weakly water soluble, means that it's better as a tincture, but it can be used in teas. Very good in tea form for things like tonsillitis, pharyngitis, swollen glands in the back of the throat, infections in the back of the throat. If you want to use it for pink eye, you want, which is conjunctivitis, remember ITIS and inflammation of, you make it as a tea, not a tincture. You mean Usnea? Well, we'll get into this too. Okay. We're going to use this the same. Oh, okay. So it's different from what you guys are treating? These are two different lichens with similar uses. And so you boil up your Usnea, or in this case this, strain it, eye cup, cool liquid, and then a day or two, inflammation's all gone. If you don't have access to, to uh, Usnea, which grows all over the place, especially on fruit trees, you'll find on older apple trees a lot, or plum trees, you name it, you can then go to this, which is called reindeer moss, so we've never seen a reindeer down here, and it's not a moss, it's a lichen. It grows all the way up from Florida to Canada. If It also contains Usnic acid as well, but if Usnea on the tree is the tin, this is the eight. It's not as strong, but it's more than strong enough to use. Now, you thought it normally was hard. Yeah. It's been raining. Uh -huh. When it rains, this becomes alive and soft and poof. When it, the weather's dry, we put some in, a, I'll take some, put it in the oven, dry it or dehydrate it, crispy, falls right apart. Mm -hmm. Then it's a great fire starter. You light that and it burns with terpenes just like the rabbit tobacco, whoosh, get your fire going. Then dish rag limp this time. But it's a great one to get because unlike Usnea, you can find this one, especially down, say, Gadsden on South, you can find it everywhere. And uh, all on Sandy Creek banks, Does Sandy Dirt the Road, same Pines. Usnea? Huh? Like, Usnea is good for like cold and flu too, right? It is. It's not my first go-to thing for it, though. I do it more for bacterial infections. Okay. In fact, um, and then for um, more for inflammatory conditions of <laughs> glands okay. than anything. Though you can use it for, for colds and flus. Mm -hmm. It just wouldn't be the first thing I go to. In your, I think it's in Norway and in Japan. They have a commercial product mm -hmm. called Uzno, and it's used for third-degree burn victims because what kills them? Not the burn. The bacteria. It's a bacterial the bacteria. infection sets up, and this stops the infection from starting up. Very good stuff. You can take this even, wash it real good, and use it as a bandage on infected wounds. In fact, when we talk about activated charcoal, I'll talk about this some more too. Excellent stuff to have. And it's common. That's what's nice about it. But just remember, when you're gathering herbs, you know, and I say this, you know, this is the eight, Usni is the, the ten. This is not a substitute for Usnea. It's something that basically is just as good. 